JP Morosi is with us from Iowa. And the Field of Dreams game is about to uh, take place. Um, you want to turn the camera around a little bit, show them the uh, All right, here we go. Field. So right. I am at the Major League Field in the press box. How about that view, everyone? Look at that. This Pretty is good. from the press box at the, and this is, uh, there's probably a, uh, uh, a little preparations going on here for the Field of Dreams game Thursday evening. I think Reds I see Cubs. I, I see Shoeless Joe Jackson, I think. He might be there. And by the way, one of the reasons why it's a unique matchup, of course, we had the White Sox and Yankees a year ago, and now it is the Reds and the Cubs, important for different reasons. The Reds were the team that defeated the White Sox in the World Series in 1919. Obviously, we understand what was going on at that time with the uh, White Sox situation. And then uh, the Cubs, uh, they are uh, they have their AAA affiliate in Des Moines, Iowa. So a great many Iowans are Cubs fans. And look at that ballpark. Just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous setting. Uh, BAM Productions, obviously very heavily involved, a Canadian-based company, in, uh, in setting everything up here, all, all the technical aspects that uh, MLB uses for the back-of-the-house production. So just a, a really special setting. And, and goodness, it, it is gorgeous. We had the, there was a minor league game here on Tuesday that we broadcast on MLB Network for the Midwest League. And I loved reading a great story by my colleague Mark Sheldon at MLB.com about the meaning of this game to the Votto family, because Joey talked about how he had uh, watched this movie with his late father, played catch, of course, with his father growing up in, in Toronto. So for Joey, a, a very emotional occasion to have him be here in Iowa for the game. So tell me, is, is that exactly the field where the movie was shot? So the answer there is no. Uh, so, okay. Bob, it's a great question, and it's an important distinction. You, you might actually – here, I'll, I'll tell isn't you this. The, I, isn't the house in the distance over there in the back right? So here you go. So check this out. I will stand up, and uh, my, my camera work – you know, John and Bob, you both have done many more productions than I have. <laughs> I will take my direction from you on this. So right. I'm going to stand up, okay, and in the distance, yeah, you can see the actual movie field, okay? Sure. Yeah, we can. So – so that's over. You probably see the White House, the picket fence. That's the former Lansing family farm. So this once upon a time was all farmland. Sure. And actually now the owner of this place is Frank Thomas. He's part of the ownership group. And the idea is to build some youth and MLB sized fields here for the future. And the idea was that, first of all, the reason why we're not playing the game on the on the movie field is twofold. Number one, they didn't want to change the, the integrity of the old movie site. You want to keep that quaint. There's not really room for there to be bleachers there as there are here, where you basically got an 8,000 seat stadium around me. You see it here. Yeah. Um, so th they could not add bleachers and seating to the old location. And also, interestingly, the, the movie site uh, is very is smaller than a major league field and has a steep grade to it in right field. If you remember watching the movie, very rarely do you see right field. It's because there's actually a natural slope to the land oh. there in, in right field. And the other part about this, it's interesting. I'll see if I can show you this part here. I'm trying to give you the grand tour as best I can. Whoop. So if you notice out that way, okay, so you can see the, the left field scoreboard and into, yeah. the, into the field. So this is a hill. So they had to move 30,000 cubic yards of material to level this out. So when initially they did the site survey, they said, wait a minute, uh, we're trying to build a baseball stadium into a hill. That's a problem. So they had to move with heavy-duty equipment 30,000 cubic yards of soil, grass, former corn, uh, any, any material to clear it and make it level. And, guys, I was walking on that field uh, during the minor league game. It is just pristine, major league quality. The lights as well, uh, an Iowa-based company called Musco Lighting is in charge of the lights here. And as we always know, you can see it there. So one of the biggest differences that anybody's ever been to a minor league game and a major league game it's the lights. The lights mm -hmm. are almost always dimmer at a minor league field. Well, here in Dyersville, because you've got a major league product on the field, they had to make sure the lights were up to a major league standard. So it's super bright, all the right uh, lumens and in terms of the, the brightness, the required brightness of a major league stadium. So Musco Lighting has, has done a great job here, and it's pretty special to be here, guys. So just I'm just curious, uh, the grandstand, permanent? No. So it is, it is not permanent. It was, it was here a year ago, and then they, they moved out the temporary bleachers, which, they, which they've done for other unique site 
games. So mm-hmm. I, I covered the Fort Bragg game on a military installation in North Carolina back in 2016. That was temporary. Um, they will add at times temporary additional seating to places like Williamsport, where we'll be later on in the month with the Little League Classic. So MLB has taken, and even you go back the the Olympic Games in 2008 in Beijing. That was basically a temporary facility. The Sydney Games were mm-hmm. also temporary. So a lot of the um, a lot of the structures here, in terms of the clubhouses, I mean, it's amazing, guys. They basically were in the middle of a cornfield. And they have clubhouses with full running water, showers, everything, um, just with a very unique set of, of sort of on-the-spot plumbing and everything else. It's just amazing what they can do. I, I'm not even sure of all the science behind it, but they're able to do it. And uh, it's just a, it's an A-level facility. It is just an outstanding place. And uh, I, I'm already seeing in the distance maybe some uh, preparations here. It's, just, it's pretty, pretty cool to be on site right now. So at the end of the movie, there is a shot <laughs> of uh you know it's it's getting dark right there is a the shot of all the car lights on a yes. single road coming into the yes. site is does that actually exist so that road exists and actually i i spoke uh i think it's two years ago now with Tim, timothy busfield who's the uh obviously one of the actors in the movie and it lives in michigan is a great actor of course very accomplished and he was telling me some of the stories about the production of it and interestingly, the story I've always heard from Timothy and others about how that scene was filmed. And yes, it's a winding two lane road that takes you back um, here to the, to the site of the former Lansing family farm. Um, when they filmed that scene, to give the illusion of, of movement, what they, what they did was they actually had like over the local radio station when they were filming this in the summer of 88, they basically had a, a local station, local frequency that said, OK, on my queue, everyone who's lined up to be an extra by driving a car to this place, we're not going to actually have you drive, but rather turn your headlights on and off to give the illusion of movement. Mm. And so if you can imagine over this you know, AM radio station in Dyersville, Iowa, Dubuque area back in 1988, the, the DJ says, OK, everyone who's, who's involved in the field of dreams, start turning your lights on and off. And they did it. And, and when you look at that scene, that's actually what you're seeing is people turning their lights on wow. and off. It's just it's extraordinary. And, and the story, the the a couple of unique things about the farmhouse. So they when they did production on this site, um, pre-production years ago to find where they were going to do this. Of course, the novel had been written by Kinsella. And then now, now we're going to have it adapted to a screenplay. So where do you want to have the, the farmhouse? Well, well, you know where Frank Kinsella is from, right? He's from Canada. He's a good Canadian boy. That's Mm -hmm. right. And to that point, John Shannon, what had happened was when they were looking for sites, they basically had an open casting call. If you have a farmhouse that agrees with the plot here, white picket fence, white farmhouse, beautiful rolling farmland, you have a farmhouse that meets this description, let us know. Basically submit your application. And the story I was told is that whether it was up through the Dakotas or anywhere in Missouri, Canada, a lot of places in Canada were actually nominated to be (laughs) the site of the field of dreams. And so uh, they just, this, it was not necessarily designed to be um, this particular town. It was just Iowa in general, and and they could have filmed an Iowa farm anywhere, but they chose here. And interestingly uh, there was, uh, when I I came here for the first time last spring in May of 21, uh, it was the, the corn of course, wasn't even up yet. And so I was just kind of getting the lay of the land. It's amazing, guys, how there is a continual pickup game on this site every day of the year when there's not snow on the ground. You basically show up dawn to dusk and you bring your glove, bring a bat if you want, bring a ball. And there are just people like baseball pilgrims who just come to play here. It's not organized. Just play, play, catch, have fun. Take your turns at bat. It's a simple, bucolic, really beautiful way to live when you come out here and and on the day the first day that i came out here uh it was the spring of you know it was may of 21 and the end of the of the school year there was a busload of kids who had driven here on their school trip like middle schoolers from galena illinois which is very close to the illinois iowa border and interestingly galena illinois in the movie field of dreams is is where they filmed all the scenes that took place in chisholm Minnesota. So Galena, wow. Illinois is the stand-in for Chisholm. And so I'm here in this cosmic connection. 
here's a school school bus load of kids from Galena. I was like, hey, it's your town. That was like the second city in this movie. So just a, a really extraordinary place to be.